All right, all right. Welcome, YouTube. This is Jack here, and I hope you're having a great day. We're back with more Borderloo campaign. So far, we are on the process of taking out the Borrow Legion. And we now have some Viking Raiders coming down here. You know nothing. So, should be interesting. So it looks like they're probably going to go to Leoness and try and take on that. Blessings of the lady be upon you. So let's try and come right to there. And let's get one more questing night gonna cost us until we switch them back oh, no. in oh, yes. and one one mounted yeoman see these guys don't cost any so let's get a couple well, let's get one large. Let's get one of you in there, so you're gonna have pretty heavily based cavalry going on. Let's put that in. We might drop some units, but want to be prepared for that army. Let's come into raid, and we gotta wait now for over here. Let's, let's just go back Very over well. here, My reputation kind of bring it back, yeah, just trying to kill, he, he's losing his corruption big time, but it'll be a ways, and we have Count Noctilus just sitting over here, so. Need to eventually build the stables. Start getting that going. Yeah, we got good growth, 204, so. Alright, let's end the turn. Just remember if you like this uh, episode or future episodes, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, ring that notification bell lets you see all uh, I guess the first quickest uh, way to see all my videos as soon as I upload them try to upload Bow before the Monday right through Lord Saturday and I will hear your demands all right defensive alliance uh, I'm gonna have to hold on to that because I don't want him to ally with Marienburg and then I have to break something so let's end that Find that for now. Gathering within Caron, the knights heard the news of a massive host of beastmen, trolls, and nameless creatures of chaos pouring from the forest of Arden. As they prepared for the final battle, messengers brought word of an army of greenskin warriors, the largest they had ever seen, pouring out of the mountainous regions known as the Pale Sisters. Worse yet, when the knights assembled outside the walls of the city, an army of Skaven rose up from the sewer networks and pillaged the city streets. As the lords took counsel before the fight, the Lady of the Lake joined their numbers. There, she had Lord Cordun and Kersalund drink from the Holy, thus the last and final 13th and 14th member of the Grail Champions. Then the, the then the Lady of the Lake blessed the whole army and bade them to fight in her name. Alright, he is coming over there to Leoness. Pirate, why didn't you go over and fight him? Lord of 
Thanks, me easy pickings. Let's try to get all the way there. At least get into there. So if he fights, we'll have 14 men. We'll have quite a few men. We are in minus 197 right now. Really don't want to be in the minuses here. Let's take a ninth errant out of here. Highest. That's good enough. All right, everything else looks pretty good. We're just waiting on funds now. We gotta deal with them. Norska, well not Norska, but Norska Drive there, Van Halen. With the ferocity not seen by their people for centuries, the knights of all the Bretonia people fought the three armies that assaulted them. The battle raged for weeks upon weeks. The foul creatures continued to pour into their lands like a stormy tide and break upon the armies of the Bretonii as against the cliff. When at last the sounds of battle fell silent, the plains of Kroon were awash with the blood of the slain. This was the greatest victory ever achieved by the Bretonii people, and the battle had finally signaled an end to the fighting and the birth of a new kingdom. The founding of the kingdom 978 to 9, I mean, sorry, to 14. 48 IC. Thus, with peace won, it was agreed that there would be an everlasting peace among the surviving 12 dukedoms. Guise was dubbed the Unifier, and with the blessing of the Lady of the Lake's representative, the mystical Frey Entrantress, he continued, he thus became the first royal arch of Bretonia. The first royal arch of Bretonia battled dark forces all across the realms for many years until he finally fell in a mighty battle by a cowardly weapon shot from afar. That's why the, they feel like archers are terrible. Or a weakly unnoble weapon because their first king died by like an, an archer shot or all right, he is running away now, you little chicken. Let's go in there to help you for a second. If the lady wins. That. He's going back up. We're going to have to hurry up and get over here to the black. Stone post. Look. Final battle there. You can't recruit anybody decent, no. Alright, we can recruit foot squires. Those would be quite useful. Four turns in global recruitment, though. We can get them at Portolo. Right? Where can we get foot squires? Okay, yeah, they're here. The shrine to Manan. There we go. Yeah, no one's gonna wanna mess with this garrison. Alright. Let's end the turn once more.
his dying breath, he asked to be laid before a small raft by a nearby lake where it was said in a legend that the lady took his body back to her dominion, where his body remains to this very day. With his tragic death of Guise in the 17th year in 995 IC by Orcish ambushers, the kingdom of Bretonia was left with a dilemma. dilemma. There was much wailing and lamentations and gnashing of teeth throughout the lands. As all Bretonia mourned the passing of their first king, Guise's only recognized son, Louis, was crowned the next Duke of Baston. However, the question of whether he should also be proclaimed King of Bretonia, as the old tribal tradition allowed, was much deba debated. Many advocated that Duke Landon should take the position, or whilst other believed his rivals Duke Thrift or a wise Duke Marcus should make a more suitable heir to the throne. The majority of the dukes eventually agreed that Louis should take on the duty. But this then posed another great problem. Louis had not drank from the Holy Grail, as had his father and all the dukes at the time of the kingdom's founding. Ooh, 3,000 safeguards. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to do that because that's going to help with public order. Public order will be quite helpful. Card Ziflum. Alright. Leonard, let's get you leveled up. Hey, you can get a Pegasus as well. Ladies Mantle. Let's get you that. And you are close to getting to level 8. Alright, we're getting plus 10 in here. That's really going to help us. Alright, he's sailing away, so that helps us. Guardian. Let's get you coming up here so we can get you up. I think that's everything. Coming at us from anywhere. Outnoculus has disappeared into the mist. And the turn. It had been decreed that no knight no matter of birthright, could become lord over all Bretonia without first having the blessings of both the Frey Enchantress and the Lady of the Lake. So it was So it was that Louis left court, setting out immediately upon his quest to find the lady, and thus prove his worth before her sight, t towards earning himself the title as king earning him the title as the rash this event eventually led to the t traditions of the questing knight for years Louis Louis the rash traveled the length and breadth of Bretonia righting many wrongs and doing great deeds of service to the goddess in his absence Duke Thruff acted as steward of all Bretonia much to the annoyance of Duke Landon. Years later, Lewis returned to his ancestral castle astride a mighty 
purebred charger with golden hair his sorry his golden hair was shining and his eyes were aglow with divine noble presence He's still keeping on a going back. All right, that's good. My reputation precedes me. See, I'm in the country. No, I'm not. Lord and the hero. Let's get you over here, I guess. So we can't go that other way. Be able to crush a lot of these zombies. Graveguard is the only thing that's really going to give us a problem. My strength and wisdom are yours. All right, let's end the turn once more. None could doubt that the lady had blessed him. So thus his subjects fell upon their knees before him and pledged their loyalty to the new king. So it was that Louis was crowned king of all Bretonia and presented with the golden crown, a gift given by the Frey Enchantress herself. All Bretonia rejoiced in their new monarch and made ready to do what Ever he demanded. His first act as king was to formalize a code of honor and chivalry that his father and the champions had lived by. These original vows of chivalric knighthood still existed within the halls of Baston upon a crumbling parchment decorated with an elaborate script detailing all the duties and pr privileges of a knight and thus of all other ranks within the noble society. All across Bretonia, knights eagerly embraced these vows, and many noble warriors gave up, gave up all deed of land and title, castles and wealth, thus to embark upon the past path of a questing knight. A wave of faith swept through Bretonia, and the Lady of the Lake verily became the permanent deity of the noble classes. Lewis also realized that as, a, as long as Athelorn stood, it would be nearly impossible for enemies to invade Bretonia from that direction. Infrastructure or growth? Ten turns of stupid infrastructure. Alright. Do you know who I am? It shall be so. See if he'll try to sally out. Lord, Lord and hero. Now, yes. And push, get some money, help us. All right, but you've come back in five turns now, so that'll help us. Nobody is coming to invade, so that helps us. Still haven't got Baston back. Looks like they still, they've made quite a way. They're all the way down to here, so we're going to have to fight some Skaven down here. Skaven Blight. All right, let's end the turn.
Furthermore, the elves defended themselves and, unlike the barons, looked for no favors, favors from the king in return. He decided to forge an alliance with the wood elves, sending one of his most esteemed questing knights, Gaston de Gellard, to brave the dangers of the forest. The brave knight reached Orion and Aurel and made them an offer of peace. No barons would would be permitted by the king to transgress the ancient boundaries of the Wood Elf realm if in return. The Wood Elves would ally with the Bretonians against their common enemies. The king and queen of the wood accepted Bruce's offer from of friendship and the messenger soon returned with various strange and magical gifts. The Duke continued to push back all manner of evil from within their borders and aided in the struggle of their neighbors to do likewise, which led to Bretonia flourishing with wealth and power. The great port cities grew large and sprawl sprawling, prosperous with renewed trade. Grail chapels were built in places of holy significance and a freight enchantress guided the dukes of Bretonia in the worship of the lady. Alright, a call to arms. I guess I'm just going to have to enter war against the clan Skyr. Let's go. Let's do it. For the next few hundred years, Bretonia continued to grow in both strength and cultural influence. This was the golden age of chivalry and when their lands were threatened, they crushed all foes that dared face them. King Gilderum defeated an, the orc tribe of massive Orkle Highlands, sparing none. Lord Lamort smashed a skeleton fleet of tomb kings at Savage Point. It is said that Bretonia will never experience such a golden age ever again. leveled up that's great because now he's going to be able to get well, he can get he already got his roll pegasus he already got that last turn so okay let's get him a charge bonus ladies mantle Let's give him some melee damage. We're close to being able to unlock. Lead from the front, that'll really help. Do you know who I am? I will indulge you. We 
are going to attack. We're going to need some good siege equipment here. I don't want to wait six turns, but... Death to the enemy! Yes? Let's come up here. Take his knight's errant out. Do those questing knights. Glory awaits. That. Yes. What? These are a lot cheaper. Never. Oh, okay. Yeah, these questing knights now are only 275. That makes a big difference. Slay them! Attack! Got a 50 50 chance now. Won't be that bad. He does have a mortise engine. That's going to do some problems. Well, we got three horses on Pegasus. We, got, we have at least four siege, siege towers bringing our people on the walls. Once we get our cavalry moving, we're going to have five archers. Well, Seven archers with the horse archers. He doesn't quite have a full stack there. Somebody's gonna be a pain in the butt with Krell, but Krell's gonna be a problem. All right, let's continue Tied that siege. Down. Alright, the Crusades against Arabia, 1448 to 1451. In the year 1470 or 1440, I see the war torn southern realms of Astelia was invaded by the Sultan Jafar and the enemies of Arabia. Diplomatic envoys pleaded with Bretonia to send aid, and the king sent sent a call to war out of all Bretonia. Throughout all the dukedoms, this call to war was heard, and countless knights pledged their lance to their king's holy cause. In this noble in this noble wisdom, King Louis the Righteous gave permission for warriors of the empire to cross Bretonia on their journey to Estilia, for they had too pledged their aid, despite the lack of unification during the age of the three emperors. This military campaign had since become named as the Great Crusade. The Great Crusade, a homage of the zeal of these warrior knights. Within, within time, the armies of Jafar were pushed back by the more mobile and heavily armored forces of the crusading knights, forcing him to relinquish his hold on most of Astelia, retreating back to Araby, but leaving a token force of troops around the important city of Megdrava. Jafar's army, armies were hounded by the Bretonians, who pushed them tirelessly, pursued them tirelessly. All right. Baston, what are you doing, buddy? We'll enter the war.
The Crusader army eventually reached the sandy beaches of Araby and invaded the major city and port city of Kaffa. As the Crusaders sailed with the aid of Astelia ports and Tilian warships, Jafar and his men prepared for the coming invasion by fortifying most of the major seaports. When they finally arrived in the spice trading city of Kaffir, it was heavily fortified and the defenders were well prepared for the coming battle. Yet, they weren't prepared for the wrath of the northern kingdoms that Jafar had brought upon them. some money now let's, see. let's get continue to get money it's gonna give us more control let's get a port it's gonna give us some more money let's get this I'm not gonna have enough money to build the stables So let's just wait. Let's see how are we doing currently on our building projects. Two turns left for the water pumps, and then we'll be able to get that. Upkeep for infantry units will be quite useful, and construction costs. We haven't done anything with Norska tribes, so we're going to have to do that. Nothing with dwarves, diplomatic relations will really help. Plus 10 leadership would help. Well, let's go down this path probably. Get Bretonia. Once the defenders first started faltering against the onslaught of knights in siege towers, a breach was made and soon the high spires of Kaffir were pulled to the ground and much of the population were put to the sword. Not even the harsh desert conditions could perturb the knights. Only the grail companions of old could hope to best me, yet you would try with words. He wants what a piece for eight hundred. No. Sorry, Kim Martin. You have been a tear. And it's time to end you towards the climb. And their fervor very slowly took its toll on Jafar's warriors as many desert tribes under Jafar's control began growing tired of this war of attrition. Despite Jafar having a vastly larger army than the Crusaders, Jafar's army began to disband and many of the tribes of Araby grew weary of the despot's incompetence. After frustrating months of minor skirmishes, the Bretonians faced Jafar at the Battle of El Hark.
the flooring definitely got a lot bigger with that. Influx of builders, cost minus 15%. That helps. Let's get a stable. See what takes. What? Well, yeah, it's going to take another four turns before we can get that. Our duchy capital. We're going to get a lot of barrels of that. Don't really need that because we already unlock it. We can just get the livestock pens. We're at minus five, so that is not good. That goes to minus one. Let's do that for now. Let's slow down that. To victory! The lady wins it. We got two more turns. Honor and glory. See how's their attrition look? For the lady to victory. Right, six more turns before attrition even starts. The lady wins it. Let's continue. Protector of the realm. Let's see. Russell is it's like ravaged. The elemental spirits of the deep deserts were summoned to fight alongside Jafar's army with their numerical superior order superiority they overwhelmed the outnumbered crusaders on all sides just when all hope seemed to lost the army was almost at the breaking point in Welcome, post of both friends. empire and bretonian knights charged military alliance yeah we can do that with the bretonia let's do it A host of both Empire and Bretonian knights charged fierce, fierce, sorry, furious, furiously at the tightly packed army, mowing down the lightly armored soldiers until finally the armies were scattered by the sudden death of Jafar by a Bretonian lance. Disliking the harsh, dry lands, for it proved too vast and hostile to be completely conquered, the Bretonians sailed back home with cargo ships laden with exotic spices and treasure, whilst the Empire Knights reclaimed, remained behind to hunt down the remnants of Jafar's army for another century, which would eventually lead to the creation of several more knightly orders. Coming back.
fire pumps that gives us seven more men. Each region can sustain an extra peasant unit. Alright, we are about to lose this. Death to the enemy! We got one more turn. Huge. He's coming back down to do some raiding. Temper, let's do yeah. Let's go with beach, that'll be unique. Devotee of the lady, your coming was foretold. The lady is with you. should really help. I think this will be an end. And next time we'll pick up on a battle. And maybe two with um, Van Howling's coming down. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Sorry there was no battles, but we will get to them next time. Alright, this is Jack signing out. Peace.